Here's an introduction to dependent pattern matching and the with rule in Idris as a kind of supplement to material that's in the official tutorial. So what is dependent pattern matching? When one argument can depend on another, then we can learn something about one pattern by pattern matching a different pattern. Here's a very simple example, the append function on vectors. So if we write our type signature append, which takes a vect of length n of a's and a length of or a vect of length m of a's, and it turns a vect of length n plus m of a's. Well, we have sort of two obvious arguments here. We have the, the two vectors that we're going to append, but there's also a couple of hidden arguments. So when we tell Idris to give us our initial pattern match, we only see the explicit ones, that is, the vectors. But behind the scenes, a, n, and m are also arguments to append. Let's watch what happens with n as we pattern match on x's. Remember that n is the length of x's. By putting it in curly braces here, we make it into a pattern that Idris shows us. So when I pattern match x's, note that I get a pattern match on n as well. This is because n is the length of x's. When x's is empty, we know that, that n is 0. And when x's is some x followed by some tail x's, then we know that n is the successor of some other natural number. In other words, it's at least 1. Then we can get the compiler to solve things for us as usual. So let's see a little bit more interesting example of this. We can define a data type called parity, which represents evenness and oddness. We can say data parity, and it takes a nat and gives back a type which is to say that for any natural number k, parity k is a type. But we need to also say how to construct elements of parity k. Well, we can do that in two ways. The first is with the constructor called even. And so even is intended to represent that our k is an even number. An easy way to define an even number is to say that a number is even if there exists some other number which is exactly half of it. In other words, if there exists some n such that n plus n equals k. In the tutorial, this is done with an implicit argument, like the n and the m above in append. Here I'm going to use an explicit argument, because I think it makes it go through a little easier, and the implicit argument only obscures the actual point. So I'll take an argument n, and then we say that, e that even of n is evidence that 2n, two, two or n plus n, is actually, an e is actually sort of an even natural number with parity. So we say that that goes to parity of n uh, plus n. Likewise, a number is odd if for all, or a number k is odd if there exists some n such that uh, k is equal to the successor of n plus n, or in other words, 1 plus 2n. We say successor of n plus n. Okay. Now we have our two constructors. The next step is to show that every natural number is either even or odd. In other words, we want to take a natural number k and we want to return sort of a witness of parity of k. That is to say either even or odd. Well, we can do this for 0, because 0 is equal to 0 plus 0. So that's fairly easy to do. We say even of 0. We load the file, and it just is happy. Likewise, we can do this for 1. Uh, remember that sec successor of 0 is 1. So we, that's odd. And the n, which is our witness of 1 being odd, is actually 0 because 1 is equal to the successor of 0 plus 0. I'll line up these patterns a little bit. But when we get to our third case here, where we have 2 plus some number, we need to know whether that number is even or odd in order to know whether 2 plus the number is even or odd. In order to do this, we need to make a recursive call to parity. But we can't make that recursive call to parity on the right-hand side. If we were to do that, then we wouldn't know enough to please the type checker. But let's try it. 
we say case parity k of, and then if it were even of some n, then we have a hole. And if it were odd of some n, then we have another hole. But if we load the file, then we get back this error message that we can't unify parity of plus n n with k. The reason for that is we haven't provided any information about the relationship between n and k. We need to do that on the left-hand side of our pattern match. And the way that that's done is using the with rule. Let me undo this real quick. OK. So in Idris mode, you do control C, control W to introduce a with block. And what with does is it gives us an additional term to pattern match on, just like a case would. But that the equalities induced by pattern matching it on that term, in other words, the things that we learn about the other terms are actually present and available. So this uh, automatic generated name with pad is a pattern variable representing the result of the call to parity k. Note that on the left-hand side we have of the pipe, we still have our same pattern as before, parity of s of s of k. But when we pattern match on with pad, then we're going to get back whether or not it was n plus n or suck of n plus n. And the reason we're going to get that back is because we can see that in the even constructor, if we have a parity of something, then it, we know that that something was something else added to itself. And in the odd constructor, if we have parity of something, then we know that that something had exactly this form, or else we couldn't have constructed it. So let's case split with that. When I case split that, my pattern on the left of the pipe got a lot more interesting. In this case, we see that we have, now have suck of suck of plus n n. So that plus is a function call. Why is there a function call in a pattern? Well, we're not actually pattern matching on the function call. What's happening is that we're pattern matching on parity of k. But by doing that pattern match, we're learning something about what form k must have had in order to construct the pattern to the right of the pipe. So this is the same thing in principle as when we pattern matched up here on x's and got back that n was equal to 0. Likewise, in the odd case, we know that our k was suck of plus n n for the n that was contained inside of odd. And we get that by unifying the index of this parity type with what results from the constructor odd. Let's finish up this definition. In the case of parity of being even, in other words, if, if parity k returned even, then we know that parity of suck of suck of k will be even, because an even number plus 2 is another even number. And in, in, what we're actually going to use is even of suck of n, because we need to sort of add 2 to it. And then so n plus 1 times 2 is the same as n plus 1 plus n plus 1. And likewise in the odd case. It's the odd of suck of n. And we load the file, and, and the type checker is still not convinced. So looking at this error message, we see that it doesn't know that plus of suck of n, suck of n, is equal to suck of suck of plus n, n. This is in fact true, but it's not trivially true. It's not the kind of thing that the, that the type checker can figure out on its own. So we need to give a proof. So we'll use the, for that, we'll use a feature of Idris called provisional definitions. So we use this question mark equal to get the type checker to accept the right-hand side for now, but give us a proof obligation to show that they're in fact equal. And then when I load the buffer, it goes through. But we see that we have these two meta variables that need to be solved, these two holes, parity lemma 1 and parity lemma 2. I don't like those names, so I'll give them explicit names. Call it even lemma and odd lemma. And we load the file again, and we have even lemma and odd lemma. Let's prove those. Well, in order to prove this, we're going to need to know something. Um, let's take a look down here. So we have our value, which is the thing on the right-hand side of the equal sign. And that's a parity of plus of suck n, suck n. And our even lemma is parity of suck of suck of plus n n. 
we know that plus is, is defined recursively on its first argument. We, so what we can do is we can normalize this term. And when we normalize the term, we, we say, Idris, reduce this as far as you can. And we see that the, the, the suck constructor comes off of the first argument, but not the second one. So this means the equality that we need to convince it of is that this suck of plus n n is equal to this plus n suck of n. We can do a type search in Idris to find out if, what, if there's anything in the standard library that will help us with that. So we say suck of plus n n is equal to plus n suck of n. And we get back that there is something, indeed, in the, in the library called this plus suck right suck, which takes two arguments, and so it's a little more general than what we need, but it'll work. All right, let's prove it. So we press the proof button and go into the prover. When I use the compute tactic, it does the same thing as the normalization command did. In other words, we see that this, has, this suck has been brought outward. The next step is intros which brings the assumptions up above the line. Then we can say rewrite. And the equality that we need goes the other way. So we say sim of plus suck right suck of n of n. I'm going a little bit fast here because I've got other screencasts to talk about how to use the prover. And now we have that value is exactly the type we're looking for after the rewrite. So we can say exact value. I don't want to use the trivial tactic here because I want to make sure it's actually picking the right value so that my function computes what it should. Although in this case it would have worked. Now we have no more goals, so we say QED and we keep our proof script. Now we can prove the odd lemma. And the proof proceeds exactly as before. We say compute, intros, rewrite, sim, of plus suck right suck and n and exact value and then we have no more goals so we say qed and then save the proof script so what we can see is that in some sense we have uh, something that's like a view pattern so in other words, by pattern matching on the result of our call to parity here, we saw some, we learned something about the form of our number k. That's the key point here. And then we can use parity that way in other functions later. I hope this was useful. <laughs>